Coming up next is Dr. Kimberly Taylor. Here's your chance to talk about what matters to you. Although you will receive helpful advice from Dr. Taylor, remember, this is not to be construed as a form of psychotherapy, diagnosis, or treatment, and cannot replace a therapeutic relationship with a mental health professional. You can reach Dr. Taylor by calling 564-1290 or toll free at 866-564-1290. You can also listen live on the internet at drkimtaylorshow.com. So here now is Dr. Kimberly Taylor. In thinking about a topic for today, I thought it would be interesting to talk about narcissism. It's a word that's tossed around and used quite often in terms of explaining the behavior of others when they're being really selfish or grandiose. Now, there have always been narcissists in our uh, society, but today with social media and now Instagram and selfies, it's just providing narcissists with a much larger platform to get the attention that they crave and to fulfill their need for constant validation. And so this issue just seems to be more obvious than ever. So who and what is a narcissist? Well, you may actually know one. A narcissist is someone who has an excessive sense of self-importance and an extreme preoccupation with how others perceive them. They seem to be consumed by their own needs so that they really lack any empathy for others. But they also envy others and they believe that they are envied in return. They believe that they're special and entitled to extraordinary privileges but they're very prone to become very angry and if they ever feel rejected or criticized or frustrated by someone else, you're going to get this huge angry outburst directed at you. Now, I do want to be very clear that narcissism is not the same thing as self-esteem because having some amount of narcissism is actually healthy. But people who have high self-esteem are often humble, whereas narcissists rarely are. I'm going to focus today on narcissistic parents and the profound impact that they can have on their children. These narcissistic parents can become so focused on themselves that they can't emphasize or meet the emotional needs of their children. So oftentimes the child of a narcissist feels useful to these parents only when they're meeting the parent's needs. And the narcissistic parent tends to see their children as an extension of themselves. And so they use them to fulfill their own needs so that they can feel more important. We've all seen these parents on the soccer fields or perhaps the stage moms where they just keep constantly pushing their kids and pushing their kids to be better and better. But it's not really for the child they're doing this. It's very obvious that it's so that they feel good. And for the child, the child only feels valued in terms of their ability to meet these needs. As they grow up, they feel like they're never good enough, and they learn early on that they have to meet the needs of the parent in order to avoid being emotionally abandoned or criticized all the time. So with that in mind, I have with me today a woman who has grown up with a narcissistic mother, and she has written a very touching book on her experience and the journey that she has had to travel in order to find her own sense of self that was separate from her mother's selfish needs. Her name is Tina Fuller, and her book is It's My Turn. Tina is very passionate about sharing her story and trying to help others who have struggled to find answers for themselves with the challenges of growing up with a narcissistic parent. So she's going to share her experience and help others to understand narcissism and how to gain control over your own life. So if there is anyone who is having trouble with a parent or a relative or even a friend and that you feel like they're completely self-absorbed and you want to be able to talk about this and join in this conversation, I really encourage you to call in today. It's at 564-1290 or email me a question at drkim at drkimtaylorshow.com. Tina Fuller, um, welcome to the program. 
And I thought we'd start by you telling me about what your book is is about and really who you wrote this book for. Oh, hi, Dr. Taylor. Uh, thank you for having me on the show. I really appreciate it. Um, the book is actually written for adults who have a narcissistic parent and are really trying to learn how to deal with the situation and how to heal from, from this emotional draining parent that they have. And uh, tell us why you actually wrote this book. I wrote it because I wanted to share all the information that I learned. Um, being a child of a narcissist, you, you tend to feel very alone in the world. And I really felt I, it was almost an obligation to share this information with others because I knew how I felt. Um, so I wanted to put it out there and, and help other people. Okay, so let's have you tell us um, what are the things that perhaps um, someone out there can ask themselves to really see, did I have a parent who was narcissistic? What are the telltale signs? Okay, um, some things you might notice would be if your parent is constantly criticizing you, um, if they're a know-it-all, uh, did they use a lot of manipulation or anger or rage or guilt to get things that they want? Um, did they constantly complain or just never seem to be satisfied no matter what you do? Um, will they often cause a scene or ruin a special day like a wedding or a special dinner or award ceremony just to get the attention on them? Um, uh, are you expected to accept all of their humiliating comments and just keep going without any type of argument? Um, do they claim responsibility for your accomplishments, such as if you won an award? Oh, well, they got that because of my genes. They're, they're perfect genes, so they got that from me. Um, are they very negative, angry, or blame others for their problems? Or do they actually lie or omit information to suit their needs. Those, those types of uh, questions are, are what you would ask yourself. Okay, and as I hear this list, what I think about is that that would be someone who is really focused on themselves to the exclusion of everyone else because a, a secure parent would really be someone who would meet the needs of their children, that they would be thinking about what their children needed and whether uh, and and they would want their children to express their own feelings. Um, so there would be a huge shift. So it, it could be very clear that uh, that someone who has just a focus on themselves and how you make them feel and whether what you're doing or not doing is um, making them happy is really one of the telltale signs. Right. That's correct. Okay. So um, if we were to switch this up and, and I was to ask you, so how did it feel for you? What are some of the signs that you are a child of a narcissistic parent? Okay, You're, you basically wouldn't have a whole lot of self-esteem. Um, you might feel you're inadequate or even broken. Um, your self-worth just is non-existent, uh, very indecisive. Um, but on the other hand, sometimes you may pick up a trait from the narcissistic parent, and you may be overconfident. Sometimes that happens. That did not happen for me personally, but, mm -hmm. but it does happen. Okay, and, and so share with us a bit about what did happen for you. Um, well, basically, I grew up thinking I was incompetent. Um, I was told, for example, that I would not be going to college because I just couldn't cut it. There was no way I'd, I'd be able to make it through. Um, if I did something and it came out not so great, I was chastised for that. If it came out great, the it was taken away from me. My accomplishment would be, oh, well, you, you, uh, you got that because I showed you how to do it. Or if I did something, a drawing, anything, it was, well, it's good, but you should have done this. You, everything was criticized. There was never, oh, good job. That, that, that was non-existent. Didn't happen. Okay, and, and, and with that then for you, I would think that you would grow up with a lot of self-doubt. 
You Absolutely. would wonder whether you were ever going to be good enough. Right. You would always have to defend yourself or justify yourself or try to explain yourself. Right. Also hide things. Um, hmm. Yes. If you did accomplish something, why tell them they're just going to rip it apart? So that was another thing. I wrote a lot of poetry. I wouldn't share it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Cause why, why would I want to put myself out there? just to get um, put down. So in, in your life, um, do you have siblings that this also happened to? Absolutely. Unfortunately, I had a brother who passed away in 1991. Um, he was my whole brother. I have three other half-siblings. Um, they're like 20 years older than I am. Um, but two of them are not aware of what is going on with my mother. Um, now, the the youngest of the first set of children is aware. We're very, very close, and she had the same exact treatment that I did. Okay, so this is not that a parent would just pick out one child. It really no. happens throughout mm-hmm. the family. Absolutely. What is the role of the father as all of this is happening? It can depend. Um they, if they're not home a lot, they may not know what's really going on, um, or they have their own issues that they don't divorce the narcissist for whatever reason they have. Um, or some people realize, okay, I can't stand this anymore, I'm getting out, and they divorce them. It, it's, it can be a pretty wide range of what happens with the father. Mm-hmm. Okay. Did did you feel like you needed or wanted your father to protect you from this mother? Absolutely, but unfortunately my father was not home. <laughs> he worked many, many hours and um, was not home during the day, obviously. And then at night he came home so late that there would be days that go by and I never saw him. Because by the time he got up, and he was gone by the time I was up. So... So part of this is that this kind of behavior can be very subtle, mm-hmm. and it isn't like it's something that's really glaring at, out out there or something that looks like it is abusive in some way. Correct. Correct. And so kids, I would assume, would grow up really feeling like, oh, this is the norm, and it's all about me. There's something wrong with me. If I Correct. was just better or quicker or prettier or kinder, right. that my mother or wh- whoever's doing this, would not be doing it to me. That's correct. As a matter of fact, if I had a friend come over, um, I would see how my mom reacted to them, and I would actually take on their persona if I thought she liked them, just so that I would get maybe a pat on the head or get that little bit of attention. Mm-hmm. But, of course, that wouldn't work. <laughs> okay. Well, but it sounds like you tried. I tried everything, Dr. <laughs> Taylor. <laughs> okay. So um, what what do you feel that sets your book apart from some of the other books on narcissism? Well, honestly, as I mentioned, you feel very alone. And when I first started out on this journey of healing, I wanted to learn everything I could about narcissism. And I read a lot of really good books but they were very clinical and very technical. And they didn't give that, what do I do? I I learned about it. That's wonderful. But then you're left hanging with, okay, now what? Mm -hmm. That's all great. I I get it, but what what do I do? What do I do with it, and how do I make it better? Exactly. Exactly. So Mm -hmm. that's what really triggered my enthusiasm, you know, not only to get the information out there so that people can understand it, but... What do I do? I, I offer a lot of suggestions, and I speak straightforward in the book as if I'm sitting down with you talking. <laughs> okay. And that is one of the aspects of this book that I uh, did like. So we are going oh, to get in, into that, and we are going to look at some of the things that, um, that you can do or just even in the ways that people can start to think about this. I'm here with Tina Fuller, and she's written the book, It's My Turn, and we will be right back after the break. I'm Kimberly Taylor, and you're listening to KZSB AM 1290. You are listening to Dr. Kimberly Taylor. You can reach her by calling 564-1290 or toll-free at 866-564-1290. 
My guest is author Tina Fuller, who has written the book, It's My Turn, and she's talking about her personal experience growing up with a narcissistic parent. So, Tina, what are the aspects of your life that you feel were really affected by having a parent who was so narcissistic? Well, honestly, every facet of my life, uh, your friends, your self-worth, um, everything, getting a, trying to get a job, every aspect is affected because you're not seeing life clearly. You're kind of looking through these, this fog almost because of your, all the negative messages that were put into your mind. Would this also include that because you doubt yourself so much that you're constantly trying to please others, whether it would be a friend or a boss, mm -hmm. and that you get into that people-pleasing mode also? Absolutely. Or you may even, you'll try to please them or you'll just back off out of fear. Well, I, I won't do it right. Or uh -huh. I'm not going to bother asking because I won't get it anyway. That type of thing could happen. Okay, because you get mm -hmm. so in tuned that mm -hmm. you're going to be criticized or judged or exactly. disrespected that, that you have to withdraw just to avoid that kind of pain. Exactly. So give us the uh, signs that, that you feel like you really experience that somebody else could ask themselves about whether they too are a child of a narcissist. Okay, you might want to think about a few points such as um, are you often critical of yourself? Do you um, tell yourself negative, negative messages? It's almost like you're hearing some of the things your parent was saying to you. Um, do you feel like you're a child again when you're around your parent if you're visiting? Um, is it hard to make decisions? Uh, do you constantly hide things from your parent for fear of being criticized? Um, are you often on the defense concerning yourself or your family around your parent? Uh, do you doubt whether you're a good son or daughter? Is it hard for you to trust people? That's a big one. Um, because, because of your parent, you don't feel safe with anyone. Um, and have you ever wished you could escape from your parent? Um, or are you considering never speaking to your parent again? Mm -hmm. um, does this parent know the effect that they're having on you, do they actually know that they are a narcissist for the most part? Absolutely not. Narcissists never take any responsibility. The rest of the world is wrong, and they are right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that makes it a little hard to deal with someone. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> okay. Um, so what I hear that you say also is that this this parent, because they have such strong needs for you to be what they need in order for them to feel good about themselves and to feel mm -hmm. like they're a good parent or that other people will respect them. Because, mm -hmm. again, one of the things for a, a narcissist is that they're very afraid of their image and they try to uphold it at all costs. That's right. So uh, I can also see that this parent then is not really going to want you to grow up to be your own person. Absolutely not. Um, so how hard was it for you to really figure out who you were separate from your parent? That is a huge challenge for anyone who has a narcissistic parent. Because you've been told so many negative messages, you start to believe them, unfortunately. Uh, and you also feel, well, if my own parent can't love me, I'm, I can't be lovable. Um, so it's really hard to handle that situation. You, you become what you think they want. And so there is no you. There's no room for you because you will have to be what they want you to be. In, in the work that I have done with um, adult children who mm -hmm. are um, part of this process is that they usually fall under a few groups. They either learn to really conform mm -hmm. or they rebel against their parents. Mm -hmm. Or they even just withdraw emotionally and uh, physically and get as far away from them as, as they can. Right. Um, when you are speaking to people or when you write about this in your book also, um, mm -hmm. what, what is the advice that you have for them? Uh, well, like you said, they, they fall under the three different categories, which is, I named it conformer, rebel and runner. 
um, the conformer is not going to change at all um, because they are basically, it's almost like a brainwashing. Mm -hmm. Um, So the conformer will never see it. If they were shown this, their whole world would come crashing down. So they can't change any more than a narcissist can. The rebel is... I labeled it that because they're the ones who argue the most with, with the parent, and they are trying to rebel against this brainwashing, basically. And then the runner tries to stay away as much as possible. Um, so each person has to react differently. Um, the rebel, you have to set boundaries and stand up for yourself, and the runner is the same. You have to set your boundaries. Okay. Um, does your mom know that you wrote this book? She only found out about, I'd say, maybe seven, eight months ago. She just found out. Mm -hmm. And what happened? Well, being that she's 92 and a half, (laughs) (laughs) uh, uh, she was very angry, but if it had been 20 years ago, she probably wouldn't have a roof on her house right now. (laughs) Um, It would have been blown off. (laughs) It would have been blown off. Um, Who knows? but still angry and just totally confused as to how I could write all these lies. She did not read the book, but she's assuming it's all lies. Okay, and what about your siblings? Did they embrace this book? No, Uh, only the youngest one did. Uh, Her and I had become extremely close over the past, oh, probably 15 years now. Um, But uh, the... I, see, I have one of each. I have a conformer, I have a uh, rebel and runner. So <laughs> we've covered the whole gamut here. Um, but the conformer, of course, is, thinks I'm out of my mind. Um, and the runner, unfortunately, he's getting a little bit older, so he's not going to accept it um, at this point because he's concerned with other issues. Um, but my, as I said, the youngest of the three, her and I are... Uh, totally in agreement with all of this. Okay, and you have created a four-step program called PACE. Mm -hmm. Um, Does this work for the conformer and the rebeller and the runner? It can only work for the rebel and the uh, runner because, as I said, the conformer is the child who is going to try to make mom or dad as happy as they possibly can. There, there is nothing wrong with mom. You, you need to help mom or dad. Mm-hmm. You're wrong because mom or dad is, is, you know, it's okay. We have to help them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. So we are going to take one short break. I am here again with Tina Fuller, and she wrote the book, It's My Turn, and we'll be right back. I'm Kimberly Taylor, and you're listening to KZSB AM 1290. You are listening to Dr. Kimberly Taylor. You can reach her by calling 564-1290 or toll-free at 866-564-1290. My guest is author Tina Fuller, who has written the book, It's My Turn, and she's talking about her personal experience growing up with a narcissistic mother. So if you are having a problem with a narcissistic parent or wondering what to do, well, this is the show for you. And I encourage you that if you'd like, you can give us a call at 564-1290 or email me at drkim at drkimtaylorshow.com. I want to remind you that this program also is rebroadcast Thursday evenings at 10 p.m. and Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. So, Tina, um, what we have learned so far is that living with a narcissistic parent has some very long-term um, effects on, on your life. Mm-hmm. Um, on a personal level, can you share some of those? Sure. Um, I had a really difficult time uh, with friendships. For example, trusting others with my personal business or my feelings. Um, I, I would worry that I would be rejected because that was my environment growing up. Um, And so I just kind of took along the patterns that I learned as a child into my adult friendships and relationships. Uh, For example, if I was dating someone and I couldn't decide what I wanted or I would expect them to just kind of tell me what 
I'm supposed to want or do, things like that, because that's what I was used to. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, like I said, it just carries on into your adulthood. So what about um, that uh, when you are trying to date or have a uh, relationship with someone? What happens then? You basically look at them and you try to please them. Uh, you don't have your own ideas or thoughts. You, you just kind of go along with what they want because, uh-oh, if you don't, there's going to be trouble. They're going to leave me. You know, that type of situation comes up. Mm-hmm. And what happens when you have children? When you have children, this is just a really important point I always try to make, is that you try to protect them from the narcissistic grandparent because it will start all over. They will try to instill those negative beliefs in them. So it's really, really important not to pass on this cycle onto your children. Mm -hmm. You describe this in your book, that it was like getting one or two cuts at a time, and so it didn't seem so bad at first. But after then years and years of all these cuts, then you really realize that your whole body is bleeding and your whole body is in need of care. That's correct. Um, you did create the four-step program called PACE. Mm -hmm. Why don't you tell us about that and what it stands for? Okay. Uh, it's uh, PACE, and it's uh, P is for protect, which means um, if you're going to have any interaction with your parent, whether it's a phone call, visit, um, you need to protect yourself because they are going to attack you. <laughs> they always do. So um, I always thought of a rubber suit so that whatever she said to me is going to bounce off. It's not going to hurt me anymore. And this is not in the way of physical abuse. You're talking just emotional, emotional. abuse to whether they criticize, reject, belittle, complain, correct. that sort of thing. That is correct. Okay. Okay. And you can do a cement wall. You can do a bubble, whatever suits you. Um, but that way you're emotionally protected. And then the second one, A, is accept. And this is, takes some time. You need to accept that your parent has a disorder. It's not you, it's them. There's something wrong with them. Um, that can take some time. Um, and then the C is for change. Unfortunately, it would be great if they could change, that's but not going to happen. That's not going to happen. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. and, and it's kind of ironic and very unfair that they have the problem, yet you're the one who has to change. But I don't mean change them. You have to change your interactions with your parent. So what is one way in which you are saying that people need to change themselves in their interactions? Stop arguing with them. That's the first thing to do. Stop trying to convince them of something like oh i did this for you mom i love you can't you see no they're not going to see it you're going to be wrong and you're going to lose so stop arguing or trying to prove your point because you're not going to win so what do they do instead of argue and defend and justify <laughs> okay mm -hmm. what you can do for example let's say um you want to wear a blue dress or a blue suit, or whichever the case may be. And the parent says, oh, you look terrible in blue. Well, that's your opinion, mom slash dad. I like blue. I'm going to wear it. And if they keep arguing, that's it. I'm wearing that. It's for me. And you set that boundary. They're not going to like it, and they're going to get angrier. But you have to set the boundary and then stick with it. That's the other piece of this. You have to stick with your boundary. So in their mind, they are thinking that they're always right, so that you should be doing what they want. So if if you actually, you know, get the courage and you do stand up and say, I don't agree with you, and it's okay to disagree. I like blue. If you don't, that's all right with me. Mm -hmm. um, the parent may still not like that, but you can at least start to like yourself because you're starting to form your own sense of self. That's right. And, and you're saying it for you, not for them. That's right. That's right. Okay, that's so it makes you feel better about yourself. Correct. All right. That's right. 
And right. lastly is E, empower, and that's empowering yourself to by building your self-esteem. And explain a bit more or give us an example of what you mean by that. For example, if you like gardening or if you like to draw, you may not be great at it, but you've kind of always wanted to try it, try it. Step out of your box and try it. And it may not work the first time, try something else. Yeah. <laughs> Just keep, don't give up. And eventually, you'll click onto something, and it'll make you feel better, just one step at a time. You said that one of the telltale signs of a parent and what they will always throw at you is, how can you treat me this way after all I've done for you? Mm -hmm. how, how do you suggest that a child or an adult who has heard this all their life, how, mm -hmm. how do you think that would be the most appropriate way to respond to this? Well, what I've done personally is I... Just say, Mom, you want a cookie or you want a star? You're my parent. You're supposed to do that. Mm. You're supposed to be out of love. There should be no strings attached. That's what I've done. She doesn't like it, but, <laughs> but it's the truth. And I'm setting a boundary by I'm not listening to this. Or I'll simply say, we're, we're not discussing this anymore. Okay, and if they say things like, I don't like your husband, I, I uh, mm -hmm. don't like your wife, I don't like the way you're raising your kids. Mm -hmm. Oh, I've had all of those, <laughs> except for the wife. <laughs> um, yeah, I've had that. And, well, the, it's not for you. They're for me. Okay. Uh, um, so basically what you're saying is I disagree with you, but mm -hmm. you are entitled to your opinion. Right. That's exactly what I use all the time. <laughs> okay, and does that work? Absolutely. Because you're, what you're saying is you can think whatever you like, and you're entitled to it. Mm -hmm. And that's where it sits. She doesn't do that anymore with me because the relationship's totally different now. But that's what I would use at the time when I was going through this. And, Mom, you can think whatever you like. You're, you're certainly entitled to it. You go right ahead. One of the things that you wrote in your book that made me just laugh out loud was <laughs> you, you have said that you see yourself as a glider plane and mm -hmm. your mother as a low-flying fighter jet and, yeah. she, <laughs> and that she is constantly shooting bullets, but Correct. that you are flying uh, too far out of her range for them to hit you now. Exactly. I in other words, her, yeah, thank you. Those are her uh, put-downs, um, any kind of negative comments. That, that's what I meant by that. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we do need to take one more quick break here. Uh, Tina Fuller, I am very happy to have you on the show. She's written the book, It's My Turn, and we're going to be right back after the break. I'm Kimberly Taylor, and you're listening to KZSB AM 1290. You are listening to Dr. Kimberly Taylor. You can reach her by calling 564-1290 or toll-free at 866-564-1290. Tina Fuller is my guest. She's the author of the book, It's My Turn, and we're talking about her personal experience growing up with a narcissistic mother. It is overwhelmingly true that having a, narciss a narcissistic parent really destroys a child's self-worth and their self-esteem. So how has writing this book affected you and your life now? Well, it's given me true joy because I'm helping so many people by doing these interviews, and it, it, I just receive emails all the time thanking me for writing it because it's opened a lot of people's eyes as to what's been going on with their parent or even their spouse. Sometimes I've I've received emails on that as well. Uh, um, and what what kinds of things are are they saying to you? What what, what kinds of feedback do you get? It, it's all been positive, uh, and and it's just a wonderful thing to know that. I'm helping all of these people, and they just are so appreciative how I listed things out and how it's plainly written and, and not too technical. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They love that. So the first steps toward healing is to probably learn all that you can mm -hmm. about narcissism and uh, to really start there to know that it's not something that you can change with someone else, that you really need to change and to do some work on yourself to help remove the impact and to build your own self-worth separate right. from this parent. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
So once more, that PACE program, the P-A-C-E, stands for? Protect, Accept, Change, and Empower. And which one of these have been the hardest for you? Um, honestly, I would have to say in the beginning it was accept. Wow. It's a shock to find out your parent actually has a personality disorder. It, it was truly a shock. You, you kind of go numb a little bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> At least I did personally. And then once I got all the information and did the research and really studied it, I was able to make those changes that, that I needed to make. Did, did you try at some point to go to your mother and say, and sit with her and say, Mom, I think this is going on and you really need to start maybe to hear how it has been with you and how I feel in your presence? Well, we had a three-hour conversation once. Now, this is before I knew, actually, that she was narcissistic. Um, and it went very well. She responded wonderfully and said, oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't realize you felt that way. And, but by the end of the three hours, we went to hang up, and she said, well, if you hadn't done what you did, this wouldn't have happened. So everything she apologized for came crashing down, and I, I basically wasted that three hours. It was all my fault anyway because I didn't listen to her. Except at this point, you know that, of course, it was going to end that way. Yeah. Well, I didn't know right. at that point that she was narcissistic. Had I known then, I certainly wouldn't have bothered. Mm -hmm. but, so what is your relationship like with her now? It's detached. I do speak with her. I did cut off communication for almost a year while I was healing. Um, and now, because I love to see my father, uh, I will go. I will talk but it's very general conversation, very minimal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Has this changed uh, how you see your dad or how you relate to him? Not at all. Actually, uh, uh, the only thing I will say, it's actually helped me because I realize he's the only parent I truly have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, and by writing this book, ha has it helped you in your personal relationships? By writing the book? Well, and just by to, I would think that to go through this process, you would really start to understand yourself more. Oh, uh -huh, absolutely. Because I could see the damage, and I've been able to reverse it. Um, it, it took a lot of work. I probably should have gone through therapy for it um, more than I did. Um, but I am able to see what happened to me, and you have to get that negative message out of your head. All that was put in, I had to pull out. And it's been a real challenge. I did get a short period of uh, therapy on this, but unfortunately, when I first um, needed the therapy, the therapist didn't realize she was narcissistic. So, Oh, so you actually picked someone who was. Um, I figured all this out. I actually wrote the book first, mm -hmm. and then I got stuck on one place, which mm -hmm. was I had one small thing that I couldn't get rid of, which was the fear of her finding out about the book. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, my gosh, I've come so far. How do I get rid of this one thing? And that's where I, I got the therapy. So how, how does this book really help those who are thinking about therapy? Well, I have, I have the opinion that it will actually help because if you have a good therapist who is well knowledge in narcissism, they can kind of help guide you and help you with some of the emotional roller coaster that's going to go on. And just from my point of view and having worked with uh, a, um, a number of uh, people who have gone through this is it isn't a short term uh, therapy no. that this kind of uh, damage really takes the long-term kind of work. But if you can work with someone who you really do trust, who it will be a challenging, but that you can start to build and know that you don't always have to just defend yourself and justify yourself and explain yourself mm -hmm. and constantly live in fear about whether somebody else is going to reject you or not. That mm -hmm. when, when you can start to get past that and then start to really decide who you are going to be and who you are and how you're going to define yourself, mm -hmm. then you really 
have the makings of, you know, starting to rebuild your life and be the kind of parent to yourself that you never mm-hmm. got That's right. while, while growing up. That's right. And again, just to make an, an, a point of you need to protect your children from your narcissistic parent because it's, it's very dangerous. They will try to instill the same negative messages in them. It's really important. So the same thing that they did to you, they will do to their grandchildren. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I've seen it firsthand. So mm-hmm. <laughs> um, it's, it's very, very important. In the process of uh, writing this book, did you talk to or find a lot of other people who were also suffering as you had? Yes. Um, I, I took a little bit of information from people that I met, but most of it was from my own experience and the research I had done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So what is the main message that you really want your readers to get from reading this particular book? That you can gain your freedom from the parent. You can be who you really are supposed to be and get rid of that negative lifestyle. You can, if I can do it, you can do it, but you have to put in the work. It's tough. Okay. And even though your parent will never like this kind of work. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you feel like they need to totally separate from a parent? I used to think so, but I think there is a time in the healing that you realize, wait a minute, I just need to get away from them for a while. But it doesn't have to be that way. Like I said, today I could go see her and I'd be fine. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't affect me at all. But I'm, I'm healed. See, someone who's just starting out, it's different for them. We're all different. Mm-hmm. Okay. So there are going to be some very obvious ways in which you can protect yourself, and then it's going to be the more subtle ways in which you also need to learn that, oh, this is the same thing, and I just need to recognize it each time that it comes, and to respond and and take care of myself and protect myself, instead of waiting for the other person to change. Exactly. Because the only thing that is going to change with the narcissist is their tactics. That's the only thing that's going to change. Okay. They will try different ways to get at you. All right. All right. Well, I want to thank you very much for this book. I think it does help a lot of people out there. And I always like it where someone has actually walked the walk and lived through uh, and then come back and teach others about how to heal and how to move something that could have been very devastating for them in their life. Mm-hmm. So thank you very much for being on our program. I want to um, make sure that I let people know the name of the book is It's My Turn. They can find it on Amazon. Um, I will also post the contact information on my website. But do you want to give the um, contact info about where they can reach you? My email is tinafuller at mac.com. And the... um website, if you are interested, is www.narcissism-answers.com. Okay. That sounds great. And we'll let people figure out how to spell narcissism without too many (laughs) S's. That's right. (laughs) Okay. Tina, thank you very, very much. Thank you for having me. All right. And we'll be right back after this break. I'm Kimberly Taylor, and you're listening to KZSB AM 1290. Some key signs that you may have a narcissistic parent are going to include that you were not allowed to have your own feelings that would upset your parent, that feeling no matter what you did, it was never enough, three, that it was hard to please a parent or that you would risk being abandoned emotionally, also that you learned to be super responsible to please parents and then others that you had a hard time making and keeping close friendships, and that you feel the need to defend, justify, and explain yourself. And lastly, that you have an overwhelming need for external validation and acceptance. 
So if you have any questions or if you feel like you need a bit more uh, uh, help that I am going to be back here next Thursday afternoon, same time and station between 2 and 3, right here at KZSB 1290. So I really hope that you will join me then. Um, Also, if you have a question or an email, contact me at drkim at drkimtaylorshow.com. One more note out there that you also may be a narcissistic parent. And I hope that if you heard this show or any of it made you just think a little bit about what you may be doing to your own children, that you also seek help. There is help out there. And while you may read the book that we uh, just talked about, about It's My Turn, it would also be helpful to go into therapy about this. So you can listen to any of these past shows. Uh, You can find them also posted on my website or download them for free as a podcast on iTunes. Um, Until then, I want you to remember, and for this topic especially, nobody else has to change in order for you to get better. You can get better all on your own. If you want to change, you must be willing to first look within and change yourself. So stop waiting for others. Just get on with trying to create the change that you want. And I will see you next Thursday 